So here's the question that we have to think about today. Why is a number raised to the zero power equal to one? Question mark. Um, let me, I guess, start by saying this, that it's not, it is not always equal to one. Why is a number raised to the zero power equal to one? Zero to the zero power is not equal to one. Zero to the zero power is not equal to zero. Zero to the zero power is undefined, undefined, makes no sense, cannot be solved, is indeterminate. Um, but I'm going to prove this later, but as I prove the rest of this, this is this one method of uh, proving it. When I use that method, it gets in the way of this a little bit, but let's try it anyway, okay? All right, so let's do this. Let's get rid of all of our stuff here. And, all right, let's do a quick example, I guess. This should have been faster, and now you're like, turn this video up. You guys sucks. It's really lousy. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, sorry. So let's try this. Here's one way of looking at it. Um, let's do it this way. 5 to the first power, 5 to the second power, 5 to the third power. Do I know what 5 to the fourth power is? 5 to the fourth power. What is 5 to the fourth power? 625, I swear it is. 625. Let's try that. So 5 to the first power is, right, is 5. 5 squared is 5 times 5. That's 25. Uh, 5 to the third power is 125, right? All I'm doing is 5 times 5 times 5 is 5 to the third power. 5 times 5 is 5 to the second power. And 5 to the fourth is 5 times 5 times 5. Hopefully I said that 5 times. Uh, 4 times. 4 times, yep. And I think, uh, well, 5 times 125 is 625. So it's 625, right? And then down here I get confused. Get confused. So, look at this. I'm like, okay. Factors 5, 5, 5. 625. I'm going to undo this. 625 divided by 5 is 125. And 125 divided by 5 is 25. And 25 divided by 5 is 5. So, just to complete that pattern, right? This is 1, isn't it? So how did I do that? I did 625. Whoops. That's some proof here. Let's see. Some evidence. 625 divided by 5 is that. 125 divided by 5 is that. Sorry. 25 divided by 5 is that. And now... 5 divided by 5 is that. And if you did this, believe it or not, if you, well, I'm not going to mess with it, but we can keep going. This pattern actually does keep going. So that works, and I think that's decent proof. Um, it, that's certainly one way to suggest that we have evidence there. The problem with that would be if you had 0 to the first power, 0 to the second power, 0 to the third power, 0 to the fourth power, you get you'd be doing division by zero, and division by zero is undefined, and that's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. But let's just take some fifth grade math, if, if you don't mind, because this is how I'd like to demonstrate this to you. I, this is my method, um, the method I prefer, anyway. And I'm just going to say this to you. I'm going to say, uh, ooh, I'm assuming something onto you, and I hope you know it, all right? The rules of exponents, when you're in algebra, go like this. If you have x to the m divided by x to the n, it's x to the m minus n, and this is commonly uh, the second rule of exponents. So this is what I'm going to go to. This is what I'm going to go to. But when I, looks like a, like a dog. So is equal to is equal to this x to the m um, x to the m over x to the n is equal to x to the m minus n. We talked about that. I was on a dog picture. Somebody knocked on my door. Sorry. So so let's take that as true. 
And then let's think about, given this rule, when would you, when would this happen? Let's take an example first, just that shows how this would work. Five squared minus, uh, five squared over five to the first is 25 over five. That would be kind of a seventh grade way to look at that. Or we could say it's five to the two minus one. That's us using this rule right here. And that would give us five to the first, but of course 25 over five is five to the first. That works good, that works fine. Uh, we could do another example of that. We could do 3 squared over 3. Ooh, this is the one we wanted to use, right? Let's, let's, let's do this one first. Let's do this. 3 cubed over 3 squared maybe is 27 over 9, which is equal to 3. But if we use this rule over here, and this rule is just based on patterns of arithmetic, then we would set it up this way. But we're going to get the same answer, right? This is 3 to the first power. We'd say x to the m over x to the n is x to the m minus n. We get 3, same basis, to the 3 minus 2. And 3 minus 2 is 1, and 3 to the first. And that, 3 to the first is that one, works great. So, remember, all of this stuff has to work with arithmetic. They didn't make the rule and then try to make the arithmetic work to it. People over time have found patterns, and the patterns that we found are these. So, the question is, when do we get something? When do we get something to the zero power? And why would that thing be 1, assuming that a is, of course, not equal to 0? Okay, well, let's look at this. What if we had this? What if we had, what if we had 3 squared? over 3 squared. Well, that would be 9 over 9. That's some 7th grade math. And 9 over 9, of course, is 1. And what I'm suggesting to you is that these patterns are set up, these rules are set up to follow math, uh, arithmetic patterns. So here's that pattern. We know arithmetically that this over this must be 1, right? That's just simple 5th, 6th, 7th grade arithmetic. I'm not very confused about that, I don't think. But look, we have 3 to the 2 minus 2, the 2 minus 2 is 3 to the 0. But 3 to the 0 we know has to equal this, sorry, has to equal this. So 3 to the 0 is equal to 1. The question is, how would you get an exponent of 0? And you'd get it something like this, I think. Okay. All right. I, I want to hear your comments on this, so let me know. And if you disagree or if you think there's a better way to show it, let's talk about it because I'm dying to, to be real good at it.